ask uh, Mrs. Kiana El Tamadi for the uh, presentation. I would like to ask. Hello everyone. Uh, let me thank you all for um, participating in this workshop and a special thanks to Dr. Faridunian for giving me this opportunity. As you can see on the screen, the uh, topic of my uh, pr presentation is uh, centering people in smart cities or uh, people-centered smart cities in other words or uh, human-centric smart cities. Uh, well, I'm um, going to uh, focus on five uh, major issues in this uh, presentation. And uh, there are two uh, major parts. The first part is smart cities, and I'm going to explain uh, about the uh, features of smart cities, the smart people, approaches of smart cities, and uh, the uh, phases and the the evolution of smart cities. And in the uh, next part, I'm uh, focused on uh, centering people in uh, smart cities. And I'm going to explain a framework for uh, people-centered smart cities and uh, how we can build people-centric smart cities and also some uh, challenges with uh, setting up this uh, kind of smart city. Uh, we all believe that uh, Technological aspects of uh, smart cities have been uh, widely accepted by various uh, communities. But uh, we cannot uh, ignore that the fundamental role of citizens in these cities have been uh, overlooked in some uh, cases. Uh, for example, lack of citizen participation in the smart city or neglecting the impact of the smart city on their lives. And also in these uh, cases, uh, smart cities uh, do not achieve their goals. Uh, some goals uh, such as improving the quality of uh, lives of citizens and uh, creating inclusive and sustainable communities. Uh, therefore, smart cities must be built on something uh, beyond the uh, use of uh, internet and uh, uh, excuse me, information and uh, communication. Uh, technology and uh, uh, we can say that a real smart city should start with people and human capital. And I can say that it is uh, necessary to uh, pay a special attention to smart citizen uh, dimension in urban planning and uh, design for the smart city. Uh, the smart citizen um, dimension on, or smart uh, people is a fundamental dimension that I will explain it in the uh, next slides. Uh, first of all, I'm investigating on some uh, popular uh, definitions of smart cities. Uh, as you all know, in uh, different fields, there are uh, wide uh, ranges of definition, but I've uh, chosen some important ones. Uh, ITU, the International uh, Telecommunication uh, Union, uh, defines a smart city as a city that uses uh, ICT to, in to increase operational efficiency, share information with the public, and improve uh, the quality of government services and well-being of uh, citizens. Uh, the first uh, definition belongs to uh, IEEE, and uh, it said that a smart city uh, brings together technology, government, and uh, society to uh, provide some features such as a smart economy, a smart uh, mobility, a smart environment, a smart people, a smart living, and a smart government. There are six dimensions, uh, six, uh, dimensions of each smart city. Uh, the third uh, definition belongs to OECD, um, the Organization for Economic Co uh, Cooperation and uh, Development that, as you know, it um, plays a critical role in shaping the uh, global economic agenda. And it said that uh, smart cities are the cities that use uh, digitalization to stakeholders to improve uh, people's well-being and create more inclusive, sustainable, and uh, resilient communities. 
And the last uh, definition is for Cisco system. It said that uh, the city that increase uh, efficiency, reduce costs, and improve uh, quality of life by using uh, ICT or smart cities. And as you see in this uh, slide, the first uh, three uh, definitions focus on a uh, people uh, citizenry uh, besides uh, using uh, technology and infrastructure. But the uh, last definition, I mean the uh, definition of a uh, CISO system, uh, mostly in um, focus on technology. Uh, now I will uh, continue the uh, presentation with a fundamental question. Across the world, smart cities often focus on technology, but uh, what about the social development? And the main uh, question of this uh, presentation and the uh, criticize for uh, building a people-centric city is uh, mainly this uh, question and this uh, challenge. Before considering that uh, question, I will explain you the key terms uh, related to smart cities or uh, we can uh, call them features and uh, factors of a smart city. And I'm uh, definitely sure that you have uh, seen these uh, categories in uh, different uh, references and I'm not going to explain it in uh, detail, but I will uh, mm, just uh, tell the dimension. The first uh, dimension is smart uh, mobility, second is smart economy, uh, third is smart environment, the uh, next is smart governments, and the fifth is smart uh, living, and the last and the one in which we are uh, focusing in this uh, presentation is smart people. And uh, as you see, there are some uh, factors and uh, components for each of these uh, features. And now I will uh, talk about a few about the smart people. For example, some uh, components like uh, social and human uh, capital, uh, qualified, creative, and uh, educated uh, citizenry. For example, uh, utilize the ICT and uh, delivering uh, consistent educational experience and something uh, and some uh, solutions like e-education. Uh, now I will uh, focus on smart people. Uh, we can say that smart city development strategy should uh, rely on citizens more than uh, technology, that it can uh, conclude to uh, people-centric cities. Now for uh, defining a smart people, uh, we can uh, define it in um, two ways. And uh, literature uh, review, smart people is uh, mostly uh, defined in these two ways. The first, um, the first uh, definition uh, focus on uh, knowledge of uh, citizenship and said that uh, a smart uh, citizen has reached a um, level of uh, knowledge and awareness that uh, that can interact uh, well with human and the environment. And also smart uh, citizen is not uh, limited to uh, IT and in fact uh, has the uh, knowledge of um, citizenship in uh, urban spaces and uh, region. And uh, we can say that uh, citizens are uh, active in this definition and they are not passive. The uh, second uh, definition said that smart uh, citizen is the opposite of technocracy and improve the uh, bottom up approaches as uh, um, Dr. Ebrahimi uh, mentioned in his uh, presentation. And I will uh, talk about it in uh, next slides. And also we can say that a smart uh, citizen has the ability to change the uh, situation and can uh, play a dominant role alongside uh, IT and also ICT. And in the end, uh, I can say that uh, technologies are at the service of uh, citizens uh, in this uh, definition. Now, uh, before uh, uh, talking about and explaining uh, people-centric uh, people, uh, smart cities, I can uh, tell you two uh, general approaches 
uh, about smart uh, cities that, uh, as I uh, said, Dr. Ibrahimi uh, completely uh, explained about it. The first approach is a technology-based approach, and the second is citizen-based. Uh, you know, two uh, different and uh, challenging uh, perspectives show the uh, top-down approach, the left side, as I said, uh, focusing on uh, technology and uh, bottom-up approach in the right side, and uh, it uh, focus on uh, citizen participation. And uh, this, uh, the second approach is uh, preferable, and it's uh, the main uh, um, idea of this uh, um, presentation. And we can say that uh, citizens should be uh, able to identify the. Uh, priorities and also uh, goals of a smart city structures, uh, strategies and be uh, considered as uh, actors in the central attention in the implementation of the smart projects and their benefits. And there are two uh, phrases that uh, can uh, complete this uh, approach, uh, people-centric and people-first. Now, uh, before considering the uh, smart uh, people centric uh, excuse me uh, people centric smart citizen uh, i can say uh, uh, i can uh, tell about the um, history of people centered smart cities and there are two uh, phases i will explain you in uh, 1980 uh, the phase was uh, researchers smart cities and with the birth of the internet in 1960s and the increasing uh, use of a computer in 1970s and uh, the uh, discovery of the uh, use of uh, computing as a tool for uh, programming by researchers the next uh, mm, the next phase is uh, mm, marketers smart cities in two uh, in 2010 uh, we can say that uh, um, private uh, sectors are uh, are a stakeholder in this uh, phase, and uh, creation of uh, market opportunities for uh, smart cities happen in this phase. And the third phase in uh, mid uh, two, 2010, uh, and, uh, uh, and this uh, phase uh, came came from uh, criticizing the uh, pre previous phase. I mean the uh, marketers or smart cities and in, in this phase uh, shifting the scale of a smart city uh, project to public uh, control for, for example something like uh, public uh, par participation education public hate data uh, governance etc and in late uh, two, 2000s uh, consumer smart city emerged and uh, it used uh, digital uh, connectivity and uh, urban infrastructure as a platform for uh, consumer uh, services, for, for example, uh, taxis, food uh, delivery, and etc. And uh, the last phase, and the one which we want to uh, talk about in uh, this uh, presentation, is people-centered smart cities in uh, 21st uh, century. And uh, we can say that uh, transforming uh, residents from inactive or uh, passive uh, consumer to uh, active participants uh, can lead to a people-centered smart city phase. Uh, now for explaining and uh, defining centering people in smart cities, I will start with a quote from uh, Ms. Tina Sabi. Uh, she said that uh, considered urban life before uh, Urban, space, urban place and uh, consider urban place uh, before uh, technology. Uh, well, we can say that uh, although uh, technology in the form of a smart uh, city infrastructure is an integral part of a smart city, but it must uh, act, uh, act as an ability to meet the needs of uh, citizens and people. And the uh, development of a smart infrastructure must follow a people-centered approach. And that it can uh, lead to uh, sustainable development and meet the needs of the people also. Uh, then, uh, an important feature of the smart city is uh, smart uh, governments, which uh, necessitate 
the people uh, participatory. Now I have um, set up a kind of a framework for people-centered smart city uh, that I've uh, categorized it in two uh, pillars. First pillar is a stakeholder in the engagement and the uh, second is uh, digitalization infrastructure. And uh, you, you may see some other uh, frameworks in uh, different uh, references, but I have uh, collected in these two uh, pillars. And I will explain about uh, the pillars in the next two slides. Um, for example, the uh, first pillar has uh, three uh, criteria, and as you see, uh, I uh, call the stakeholders a citizen in the um, top of the stakeholders and government and uh, private sector. And uh, for the uh, second pillar, the uh, digitalization infrastructure, I have um, mention uh, eight uh, criteria that I will explain it in the next slides. Well, uh, for the first uh, pillar, uh, I mean uh, digitalization infrastructure, there are uh, eight uh, criteria as I mentioned before. The first criteria is uh, e-government and I have uh, defined uh, some indicators and uh, obviously mm, uh, you can or uh, planners and uh, the stakeholders and also um, uh, decision uh, makers can uh, define uh, much more uh, indicators or indexes and uh, this uh, framework can help us to uh, make a, a better uh, people-centric smart cities and also uh, after setting up a, a smart city uh, um, we can evaluate our smart cities by uh, checking these indicators. Then, uh, for the uh, first criteria, uh, e-government, for example, the uh, online voting or a percent of uh, online city uh, services can be uh, mentioned. For uh, the criteria of uh, connectivity, uh, percentage of uh, households equipped with uh, Wi-Fi internet or uh, uh, usage of uh, uh, digital applications. For the third uh, criteria, smart uh, mobility, uh, we can uh, choose some indicators like uh, the availability of ETC uh, systems for paying tolls in the roads or uh, online service uh, providers. For a smart housing, for example, a smart uh, infrastructures of the building or a smart uh, facades of the building or uh, some um, cadastral data. For uh, jobs and firms or occupation, for example, a uh, percentage of uh, teleworking or uh, online platforms for job seekers who uh, want to find jobs. And uh, for the uh, criteria of uh, energy, water, and waste, uh, we can uh, measure some indicators such as uh, the energy consumption, for example, for a city or for a building or town, or a percentage of uh, households equipped with smart energy uh, meters and etc. Uh, for uh, the dimension of uh, e-health, for example, a percentage of appointments uh, conducted remotely or uh, for example, uh, online uh, delivery services from uh, drive stores. For e-education or e-learning, the percentage of students or uh, children who have access to e-learning uh, platforms and applications. Uh, now I want to uh, review the second uh, pillar and as I said, it's the stakeholder engagement and you know that uh, previous uh, pillar is uh, also defined and is uh, accepted in uh, all smart cities. But the uh, second pillar is uh, uh, focusing on uh, centering people in these kind of smart cities. And I have uh, defined three uh, criteria for this, for this uh, pillar. The first one is stakeholder uh, participation. And uh, some indicators such as uh, communication between uh, promoters of engagement uh, process or, for example, uh, vote 
turnout, it showed the um, participation of people, and uh, rate of uh, collaborative or participatory planning uh, usage in uh, some kind of uh, in uh, different uh, municipalities. And the second uh, criteria is uh, inclusiveness and uh, equity. Uh, and I have uh, mentioned three uh, indicators. The first one is uh, involving uh, stakeholders in the engagement of process. And as you see, uh, for this uh, pillar, uh, some indicators are uh, overlap with each other. The second, uh, uh, the um, second indicator for the uh, second cr criteria is equitable share of uh, representation among categories of stakeholders and also a uh, broad outreach to inform individual and organizations. The third and the last uh, criteria is uh, clarity and uh, transparency that it uh, refers to uh, a smart uh, governance and uh, some indicators such as uh, dissemination of, of uh, summarize of a stakeholders uh, meeting and uh, for example conferences and also uh, transparency in budgeting and human uh, resource mm, characteristics, for example, uh, salaries and etc. Uh, they're uh, something like that. And uh, mm, clear understanding of the framework of the engagement process. And now I'm going to um, talk about that how we can build a people center smart cities. Uh, I can say that uh, revising a smart uh, city approach to be more inclusive or building a new smart city strategy is not that much easy and uh, there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, however, there are uh, 10 steps here that it has been uh, recommended by uh, UN Habitat and uh, you know that uh, UN uh, programs for uh, human uh, settlement and uh, sustainable um, development. The uh, first step uh, is uh, identify a leadership structure. It means establish key roles uh, such as a chief uh, technology officer or chief uh, digital officer. The next step is uh, build the capacity and uh, position the plan. It means uh, we should uh, determine what, uh, what uh, financial uh, staffing or infrastructural uh, resources are uh, requiring for building a people-centered smart city. The third step is uh, create a standard for inclusive uh, participation. Uh, the fourth step is uh, identify key partners. It means uh, identify what uh, national and uh, local organization can support our strategy. The fifth step is uh, build a uh, digital equity uh, framework or such framework that I uh, mentioned in the uh, previous two slides. Uh, it means uh, work uh, toward establishing a, a digital inclusion plan for inclusive access to uh, connectivity, uh, digital uh, skills, and also uh, devices. The next step is build a uh, management and operations ecosystem. Uh, establish uh, how our uh, people-centered uh, programs will be uh, managed. And the uh, next step is uh, create a plan for uh, data, for example, establish an uh, IT plan for um, our data. The uh, next step, uh, build a program design and implementation. Uh, and in this step, we should uh, begin to uh, identify key uh, program. In the uh, next step, uh, we should uh, create an evaluation framework and also the uh, framework that I uh, introduce you uh, and as I said, it uh, can be a good uh, framework for evaluating our smart city uh, after building them. And the uh, uh, last step is uh, pilot and uh, pivot. Uh, you know, it means uh, begin with uh, deployment or uh, programming at a small scale or with a focus group uh, and uh, identify uh, lessons learned and uh, refine approach, uh, approaches before scaling. Uh, now for uh, concluding this uh, presentation, 
I will uh, introduce and talk about some challenges with uh, setting up a people a smart city. And in uh, previous slides, I uh, defined uh, centering people in the smart cities. Uh, then I said that uh, we can uh, make a framework for uh, for uh, building it and how how we can uh, setting up it. And now there are some uh, challenges. And uh, especially in some uh, countries like our uh, like our uh, countries and uh, mm, developing countries also have these uh, challenges uh, more than the uh, developed countries that they are uh, that they are uh, forward in smart cities approaches. Uh, there are, uh, as I said, there are some challenges, and uh, we can uh, have some uh, solutions for uh, uh, for overcoming these uh, challenges. The first challenge is uh, lack of local uh, capacity. For example, we can uh, um, allocate funds to attract uh, new talent, partner with uh, foreign and non-governmental uh, organization, and also partner with a uh, local organization and train uh, residents in skill uh, training. Uh, the next challenge is uh, lack of community uh, participation. And uh, as a solution, we can um, collaborate with a local civil uh, society organization and also we can uh, award prizes to uh, residents for uh, participating and also uh, dealing with uh, residents uh, life experiences as a specialist uh, topic. Uh, then the uh, third challenge is uh, finance uh, restrictions and challenging investments for uh, uh, overcoming this challenge, we can uh, identify uh, revenue uh, generating constraints for uh, city uh, technologies, uh, and also we can uh, take advantage of uh, private uh, partnerships or, for example, bank loans, and etc. Uh, the fourth and uh, one of the uh, most important challenges, especially in uh, developing countries is uh, culture change. And uh, for uh, some uh, solution for this challenges, uh, challenge, uh, we can uh, identify the uh, legal stakeholders in the um, governments and also uh, educate these uh, people to overcome this uh, culture change and this uh, challenge. Uh, the next challenge is um, legal landscape lacks guidance. Uh, and uh, and uh, for uh, having a kind of uh, solution, we can uh, use executive uh, orders and also uh, municipal laws to uh, create uh, legal frameworks. Uh, the next uh, challenge is uh, achieving interoperability and standardization. Uh, uh, obviously, for this uh, challenge, uh, we can establish a digital of this uh, presentation are uh, listed in these uh, slides, in these two slides. And uh, thank you for your attention. And again, I will uh, mm, I have to say that uh, a special thanks to Dr. Uh, Freydunian for uh, giving me the opportunity to participate in this uh, workshop. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tamadi. Uh, I forgot to say, Ms. I introduce Ms. Etamadi. She is a, a consultant at uh, Tehran Municipality and also a PhD student at uh, Tarbiyat Modaris University. 